Uh, greetings, real Whovians. Whovian Queen here. Hope I have a good week so far. And well, it's that time again. It's now time to take a look at my top 10 favorite 11 Doctor stories. And I've had to make a couple changes to this list just, you know, just based on my own opinion and also never try not to make you guys a little mad at me. But again, these are my opinions and, your feel, and feel free to voice yours in the comment section below. So let's get started with number 10, a good man goes to war. So this is so so the yeah sorry. So this episode is the halfway point of series six, and to be perfectly perfectly honest, it's just kind of meh for me. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, this episode does have like the huge revelation of you know that oh River Song is Amy Rory's daughter and blah blah blah. But it's like I think we pretty much kind of. We're able to figure that out, I guess, but still, it's just like, oh yeah, this huge thing, and blah blah blah, but, you know, and everything going on with the silence, and Madam, and the eye patch lady, and everything else like that, it's just, I don't know, this episode just feels kind of a bit of a jumble to me, so, yeah, but anyway, moving on, number nine, The Time of the Doctor. Now, this is Matt Smith's final episode, and I just covered this episode last week. But to be perfectly honest, though, it's like... I don't know. It just feels kind of weird to me. The, the fact that, like, the Doctor is now dying of old age, and yeah, because he's out of regenerations and stuff like that. But still, as final episodes go, I just don't feel... Like, there was that much, like, I mean, yeah, so yeah, there he's fighting against all of his former enemies and stuff like that, but to me, it just didn't have the same emotional gravitas as uh, as David Tennant's final episode. So, yeah, like, I, I didn't feel like there was, like, a whole lot of emotional weight to it as David Tennant's final episode, The End of Time. So, yeah. Anyway, moving on. Number eight. The Doctor, the Widow, and the Wardrobe. Yes, another Christmas special. Now, don't get me wrong. I do like these subtle homages to The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. But still, this is probably my least favorite Christmas special. So, yeah, if you've seen the episode, well then, I think you probably have a good understanding why. But, yeah. Anyway, moving on. Number seven. The Wedding of River Song, the final episode of Series 6. I actually really do like this episode. The fact that ties in everything together is kind of nice. And also, like, the alternate reality, alternate reality, like, if River never actually shot the Doctor, I thought that was actually kind of cool. But, of course, the major plot twist that it actually wasn't the Doctor. So, yeah, I think that was actually kind of a bit cool. So, yeah. But still, I think we do need an episode where we actually find out the Doctor's actual name. Just throwing that out there. So there you go. Anyway, number six, A Christmas Carol. I freaking love this <clears throat> episode, okay? Now, as much as I love... Now, as much as I love the subtle homages to The Lion and Witch of the Wardrobe and The Doctor of the Widow and the Wardrobe, <clears throat> A Christmas Carol actually does pay homage to a Christmas to the original story, a lot better, okay? So, yeah. So I think the pro for me, the major problem with the Doctor, the Widow, and the Wardrobe is that I wish there were like more homages or references to the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. But here in A Christmas Carol, <clears throat> we actually get a bunch of homages and references, or well, references, I guess, or homages or whatever, to the original story, and I love that. So there you go. Plus, hey, come on. You got a flying shark in this episode. A freaking flying shark. Need I say more? I don't think so. So there you go. Plus, hey, we got Dumbledore himself, Sir Michael Gambon, as the quote-unquote villain of the story. So that's actually pretty cool. So kudos. Anyway, number five, Asylum of the Daleks. This is the first episode of Series 7. And this and also serves as a semi-introduction to Clara Oswald. Granted, it's a different version of her, but 
still, it's just amazing. I love this episode. I love the Daleks. And also seeing the different versions of the Daleks, I think it's just so cool. And plus, this episode genuinely felt kind of scary to me. But still, the way that the, that the problem is dealt with at the end is actually kind of interesting. So, yeah. All right, number four, the Angels Take Manhattan. Yeah. Needless to say, this episode is damn emotional. I mean, this is with would this be the last episode with Amy and Rory? I just kind of it's just a huge punch of the gut when they have to say goodbye to the doctor all because of those darn darn weeping angels. <clears throat> but still, for me, I freaking love that image of the Statue of Liberty as a freaking weeping angel statue. That was super frightening and cool at the same time. I mean, come on. You can't deny that was freaking awesome. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Number three, the 11th hour. Matt Smith's very first episode. And I freaking love it. Okay. From seeing the doctor hang out with young Amy and <clears throat> then seeing Amy all grown up. And the fact that, you know, she was obsessive over the doctor but kind of like in a childlike way, like she was, oh, sorry, <clears throat> like for her, the doctor was like this imaginary friend that she absolutely loved and adored. And she waited years for him to come back. And after that, she was all grown up and kind of grew out of her fairy tale obsession with him. But the fact that she ultimately decided to travel with him, I think shows that she still had that bit of childlike innocence within her. So, yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. All right, so number two, the 50th anniversary special, The Day of the Doctor. I love this episode. It was great seeing David Tennant again. I love John Hurt as the War Doctor. And just subtle references to the classic air and stuff like that. It was just so cool. And also references to David Tennant's era with the whole... With the whole thing when the doc when they love a doctor said, it's a timey wine kind of thing. <laughs> I just absolutely love that. So, yeah. But still, this episode just blows all the other anniversary specials out of the water. So there you go. Plus, we got to see a little cameo from the twelfth Doctor. So that was also cool. So yeah. And finally, at number one, Vincent and the Doctor. I absolutely love this episode. I loved when the Doctor and Amy went back in time to see Vincent Van Gogh and and everything that happened in the previous episode with Rory being erased from history and Amy not and Amy not being able to remember him. I think this was kind of a nice. Well, I would say that the event this adventure is a distraction in any way, shape, or form. It did feel kind of nice i guess like a nice little change of pace you know and the fact that vincent made a well, one of less one of Vincent's less paintings was dedicated to amy i thought that was just super nice and it's just very emotional like the fact that the doctor and amy tried to change history so that vincent never killed himself but he still did in the end it's just well it is well it doesn't have the same emotional impact as the angels take manhattan it still does a good, it's still a very emotional episode nonetheless, and I still love it, so there you go. All right, everyone, so those are my top 10 favorite 11 Doctor stories. Let me know what your favorite 11 Doctor adventures are in the comment section below. And don't forget to tune in next week as we take a look at the 12th Doctor's first episode, Deep Breath. So, until then, this is Hoobie and Queen saying, Oh my giddy aunt! When I say run, run! I'm a recipe player the new Trump flow. Would you like a jelly, baby? Fantastic! Allons-y! Geronimo! Bow ties are cool, fences are cool, and... Stetsons are cool.